This presentation will focus on Mach 5.3, our universal sampler. I'll do a quick overview, and I'll delve into some advanced sound design techniques. So before I do that, I want to take a moment to mention some of the awards Mach 5.3 has garnered in recent years. We've won the MIPA Award, which is the Music Mesa International Press Award, very prestigious European award. Keyboard Magazine has given us a Key Buy Award. Music Tech has, gi has given us an Editor's Choice Award. And Computer Music also said, you know, we had the best soft sampler of the year. So nice recognition for Mach 5 version 3. For those of you who aren't familiar with Mach 5, Mach 5.3 is a virtual instrument that operates as a sampler, a, a synthesizer, a sound design tool, and a performance instrument. It runs in standalone mode, but it also is supported on all the major plug-in formats. So it works audio unit, VST, RTAS, AAX, 32-bit, 64-bit support. It ships with 43 gigabytes of content. So we've got sampled, scripted instruments, uh, we've got synth sounds, a sound effects library are included. It reads all other Motu UVI based instruments. So if you own Ethno 2, Electric Keys, BPM, Motu Symphonic Instrument, these libraries can load into Mach 5 version 3. Also, it reads tempo embedded files. So if you have acidized wave files, rex files, apple loops, you can drop those in Mach 5 version 3. It'll see the tempo information. You can drag and drop the files into your host, which is handy. The other great feature of Mach 5 version 3 is its ability to read many other third party libraries without conversion. There's a long list NKI, which is the contact format. Giga Studio, ESX24, Roland, Emu, Kurzweil, Sample Cell. These libraries can be read inside Mach 5 version 3. So it makes it sort of a universal instrument. Let's talk for a minute about some of the third party sound libraries. It's a growing and active community of developers. Acoustic Samples is a company that makes some beautiful guitar instruments, uh, the GD6, the Sunbird. They make a beautiful Kawaii acoustic piano sample. Uh, VI Labs also makes wonderful pianos. They make the True Keys collection and the Ravenscroft piano work inside Mach 5 version 3. If you're into choir sounds, Veer Harmonic makes soloists and voices of Prague, which are scripted choir instruments that you can even type in phonetic words and create your own playback uh, for your whatever composition you're working on. Gospel Musicians makes Pure Sign, Talkbox Junior, Neo Soul Keys, some urban sounds for Mach 5 version 3. So let's switch over and, and let's kind of uh, build something, build a multi in Mach 5.3 using the various uh, oscillators and synth synthesis. So here we've got Digital Performer 807 running. We've got Mach 5.3 running as an audio unit plugin. You can see it's an empty instance. So let's build something. I'm going to go over here to the Browse tab. And we can click on this little icon, which will bring up the oscillators. And you can see we've got down below synthesis. So let's take uh, an analog stack. We'll stack various oscillators together. Let's go down here to pad and we'll drop it in. It maps across the whole key range. You can see this is made up of four oscillators, four sine waves. So let's kind of manipulate this. Let's see if we have sound. And you can see each oscillator has sort of a mixer where we can pan and we can change the level and gain. So if we wanted to sort of pan these and get a very wide spread, let's do that. And you can also see we've got things like pulse width modulation, where we can add, change the shape to create a little more sort of high frequency in this particular sound. So what we're going to do is build this. We've started off with synthesis. So I want to limit the key range. So you can see right here I can drag. And let's bring it down and just do one octave here below middle C. Let's bring up the bottom end. We can just sort of drag this up. So let's put it down here. And let's see if it's playing. OK, so let's actually bring it up an octave. So now I need to change the root. So we'll double click. And let's go C2. So you can, any time you change a key group, you can sort of retell it where the center is. And in this case, I took the root and changed it to C2. So I revoiced it so it'll play in this limited range here, which I've got a 49-note a keyboard controller.
So now let's give it some life. It seems a little dead and flat. Let's let's breathe some rhythm into this instrument. So the way I'm going to do that is right click on the pan knob. Every parameter in Mach 5.3 is MIDI learnable or modulatable. So let's go and add modulation. We'll go to a layer and let's add an LFO. In the bottom right corner, we can now take the LFO and click on the sync button. And let's actually sync it here using something like eighth notes. There we go. So you can see the pan knob is now being modulated by the LFO. And now let's try adding a filter. We've got two filters that you can add and lots of different types of filters. So let's go for a resonant low pass filter. And let's see what that sounds like. So it might be kind of nice to take the resonance, which of course is the cutoff frequency, and let's modulate the cutoff frequency. So we'll right click, add modulation, and let's just use the existing LFO. It's, it's there, we can use it. So let's see what that sounds like. Okay, cool. So that's sort of a foundation. Now, it might be nice to give it a little effect. So if I click on the FX tab at the top, one neat feature or sort of architectural design of Mach 5.3 is, is where you can add effects to various levels. So I can add it on the master level, part level, program, and how about we put it on the layer level. So if I plus it, here's all the effects. A, a large assortment of effects are included in Mach 5.3. Let's go for a ping pong delay. Let's try Springly. Let's click on the sync button. And let's try 16th notes and see what that sounds like. adds a little bit of a tape echoed with a little bit of feedback, a 16th note delay. So, okay, so that's kind of a pedal we're going to use for this demonstration. And so let's do this. Let's go back. And now I want to add, I'm going to go back to the, in, the edit window. Let's go looking for a sound to add on top of it. When you add your sound banks, you'll see them in the browser. And we've got things in here like Motu Symphonic Instrument. So let's grab a piano. And we've got... See, pianos, the German piano is a Steinway sample. I don't want to replace the part, so I'm going to actually add this piano. At the bottom, you'll see there's a load as layers button. So now when I double click on this German piano, it brings it in. And so you can see if I go to the tree view, the tree view will let me look at each layer at different times. So there's the piano. Let's see what it sounds like. It's real dry. So we can now we'll get into sort of editing the piano a little bit. And I'm going to take these key groups below middle C, and I'm going to remove them. I'm just going to delete them. So I don't want it to sound in this key, so let's do a little more tidy work here. Yeah, so it's only now, uh, this piano is only above middle C at this point, so that I've get, kept that synth layer below. So now we've got these, all these different key groups. Let's go now into the effects tab, and let's add an effect to the piano. It sounds a little dry. So let's go plus, and let's add one of the beautiful algorithmic reverbs here called spark verb, large to endless. Listen to what this endless uh, spark verb preset sounds like. Beautiful, endless, <laughs> endless reverb. So maybe 50 second decay is, is kind of pushing it here. Let's bring it back down to earth a little bit, and let's see what that sounds like. Okay, so we've got, we've got a, a piano I want to arpeggiate on top of the synth layer. So let's go to the event tab at the very top. This is where you can get into MIDI scripting and the MIDI events that we've added to Mach 5 version 3. So I hit the plus key. Let's go to ARP, and let's go down to a preset here called Wedding Time. So this is going to be a 16th note ARP, and you can see that we've got sort of levels. And I think it's a little edgy, the piano, so I'm going to make sure that the peak amount of each ARP is not too loud, so it sounds a little sweeter. So let's see what that sounds like. Nice, and of course it's all locked to tempo, and that's dictated in this case by a digital performer. So if I wanted to alter the tempo, I would change the host tempo. So now let's see if we can sort of uh, play these two parts together and see what that sounds like. And by the way, that the synth is a little hot right now, so I'm gonna go back to tree view and you can see with layer one, I can just grab the volume and I can just drag. And we can pull down that synth layer.
So we've got something kind of interesting that might be an opening for a project or a queue. So it would be nice now to add a drum loop to this and see what that sounds like. So let's do that. Let's go back to parts. And right now we're in part one, which is of course signed to MIDI channel one. Let's mute the part and let's actually reassign part two to channel one. Of course, you can create endless amounts of stacks and you can have un unlimited parts inside one Mach 5 instance. So now we'll go into the browser and we'll turn the volume down just a little bit on part two because I know the drums can get pretty hot. So we'll go down to the universal loops and instruments category. And you can see here are loops. Let's try the trip hop category. Nice and loud here, we'll pull this back. So as I mentioned earlier, if you drag in looped information like acidized wave files, rex files, Mach 5 sees the slices. So you can come in there and manipulate them even more. You can alter whether they're playing back in you know double time, half time. You've got all that capability. Um, so let's actually limit the range of this loop. Well, let's do one thing. Let's switch from slice over to the earcom granular. So now we're going to see if we can start and stop and slow down the loop to create sort of an ambient effect. So let's see what that sounds like. So we're going to slow it down. And how about we change, not only slow it down, change the grain size. So now we're kind of slow, and now we'll change the position of where it plays. It's really creative. It's really interesting how you can manipulate the drums and have them play and stop and stutter. And again, every parameter you can right click and MIDI learn. So if you've got a lot of knobs in your studio, you can assign everything and do it on the fly. And of course, it will record that, records that MIDI information into your DAW. So you can go back and re-edit it, redraw it, edit, you know, reassign it. So let's now limit the range of this drum. Let's bring it down to just middle C. And I think I can do that pretty quickly by dragging the ends. And let's bring up the bottom. So as I sustain the other two layers, I'll be playing my drums. And let's make sure it's working. And how about we add an effect to the drum loop so it even has more ambient sort of decay. So we'll go to effects. And let's plus and go to delay. And how about another ping pong? Because why not? I like the sound of those. And let's go to eight miles. And let's see what, let's kind of crank the mix. We'll slow it down. Okay, well, let's see what we can do with, with adding it as another layer after what I re-trigger. So let's unmute part one, and I'll sustain the synth layer. And let's actually uh, show the piano layer from the list view so you can see. So we'll start with that. sort of just doing something on the fly, just to get your sort of mind working about what you can do with Mach 5 version 3. So now how do I save this as a multi? If I want to send it to a friend who has Mach 5 version 3, I go up to the wrench. In this case, what might be nice to do is to save this multi. Now think of a multi as an entire instance of Mach 5 3, whether running in standalone or as a plugin. So let's go save multi in samples. And I'll say on the desktop, we'll just call this ML Chaos. And now if I right click on the wrench, I'll clear the multi and let's just grab ML Chaos from the desktop and if I just drag it right up to the multi window and let go, look how quickly I can get right back where I started. So it's so easy to create your own samples. We've got the synth layer, we've got the pianos and samples and all the earcom and loop technology all inside this wonderful instrument with all these effects. It makes it so powerful. I always tell guys, look, even if you love and use other competing products. This is such a powerful tool to have. 
And uh, I hope you've learned something, and thank you very much for joining me.